right, this is MXUX. I got another video here on the moose test. A lot of controversy on the first moose test video. Uh, you can go on the internet, you can click on uh, MXUX moose test, and uh, you can see the video. Uh, it's a blowback. Just uh, anyway, let's go. Let's get started on this. The Aptera version, Aptera version one. This is about the Aptera. Uh, as part of the X Prize back in 2008, they lost the uh, contest based on the uh, moose test. Uh, the back end slid out of the car and uh, knocked over a couple cones, and they did it a number of times. They couldn't get it to pass. That particular version, uh, the new Aptera is, you know, obviously a totally new, uh, same form factor, but whole whole new design. Uh, by way of review, the Moose test is a rapid lane change to, at uh, 37 miles an hour, and you're not supposed to touch the gas or the brakes. And they uh, make a course with uh, traffic cones, and it's two lanes. And basically, you drive up, you cross over the oncoming traffic, and then you cross back so you don't get in a uh, head on. And you start at 37 miles an hour, and you increase. Uh, Increase speed until you fail, and uh, the higher the speed, the better. And I think 53 is 53 miles per hour is one of the best scores. Uh, the Testarossa and the Porsches do well. I think the 53 mile per hour. You can look at that video. I think it's a Citroen. Anyway, they call it the Moose Test because the Swedes came up with it to simulate uh, avoiding a moose crossing the road. Uh, you drive to miss it. You know, it could be a child crossing the road. It could be a car backing out. A lot of different things it could represent. A lot of cars fail it. The Toyotas and the Jeeps do not do well uh, in the past. Uh, the Jeep Cherokee is infamous for bouncing all over the place like a ping pong ball. Uh, now, in the comments and in generally on the web, uh, a lot of people say that this is not a relevant test. There aren't any moose in America. Well, that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. The mo it doesn't have to be a moose. You know, like I said, it could be a kid walking across the street. It could be a car cutting in front of you in a lane. It could be a, somebody backing out of a driveway. There's a lot of things it could be. It just represents uh, a quick movement in a uh, situation and how well a car handles that. And, um, they also say it's not fair because, you know, it depends who's driving. The, the, the one uh, test that went really bad that rolled a uh, Mercedes little utility vehicle kind of thing, um, it was a, there was a journalist at the wheel, and that caused all kind of trouble. So they say it depends on the driver and your driving position. And anyway, after all this rigmarole, uh, there's now a new improved moose test. And I just found out about this, like I just found out about the moose test on the last video. So let's try to go over it. That's the point of this video. Okay. Now let's just do this again. There you go. There's the moose. Go back. All right. That's what a moose test is supposed to look like. And... There you go. Now, this is this is this is a recent article. Just to get everybody saying, well, there you know, well, there's a moose on the road. There you go. Dark, dark icy road. Got a moose on it. Hey, who says there ain't no mooses out there? There's old Bullwinkle there. Uh, how how are you gonna miss that? I mean, where are you gonna go with that? You know, they're driving on the other side of the road. So the, the idea is to go behind the moose not in front of the moose because they say if you go in front of the moose where it's walking you know in front of it it'll you'll just plow into it you got to go behind it and then switch back so you don't get head on anyway this just uh, goes to show you yes there are mooses in the wild and they are walking across the roads but anyway it could be any it could be a child like i said whatever dog you know whatever here's the moose test bar two in the ISO 3888-2. And you can look over there and you see, 
you got it's like a tie fighter cockpit you got a motor on the steering wheel you got a speed sensor screen there you got some kind of cable some kind of joystick the point is this thing does the same movement every time there's no variation and I don't know I guess you jerk the joystick to make it work I don't know how it works exactly but the point is it it's repeatable and it it takes out the human element uh, yeah there's a couple other changes they made in the old test you would just start at the far end of the runway or wherever they were doing it and you would come towards the camera and you either passed or failed in this new test you start at the far end and you come up and then you turn around and you go back so you got to do it twice um, also the old test was very rigid with the measurements of the course they had uh, the cones were spaced very exactly and in this new test uh, there's some variance given to the cone spacing depending on how wide the car is and the old test was the same for everybody which I don't know you know I don't know I don't know how that I don't know what the deal is on that you know what I mean anyway uh, I kind of liked all everybody having the same test but anyway this is iOS ISO 3888 number two so this is dash two so maybe this will uh, satisfy some of the critics out there and give us a more standardized test uh, that was the purpose of it uh, here is a video I found of uh, just a clip of uh, of a moose test actually taking place the setups a little bit different but this will just give you an idea of what's going on you'll notice the guy doesn't touch the steering wheel and See there, there it goes, there it goes. And there goes the car, and there it goes. And maybe we'll play that one more time so you get an idea of that. Okay, and there's your computer, and there you go, critics of the moose test. Now see, even with the machine, I don't know if that would be a fail or not. One of the tires came off the ground. There were no cones there, it's hard to say. But uh, if that would have, I mean, that's, in my opinion, not a very good result. At 37 miles an hour, the car can't even keep all four wheels on the ground. But anyway, and that's with a machine driver. You know, a human driver actually might make an error in that case. But anyway, this is the new test. Uh, and I guess they use both of them, depending on, you know, who's doing the testing or what car it is. Um, let's see here. Now, this is pretty cool now here's your here's your course here here's the moose right here so the car comes down ah and then goes back in its own lane this is a Hyundai I think on autopilot with LiDAR and it's reading these cones and I think it's checking its speed and braking uh, as part of the autopilot so I think it's kind of a cheat, <laughs> but anyway, give you an idea of how an autonomous driving vehicle can do it. All right, look at that. No problem. And again, there you go. Now you can see, there it goes, and it's really whipping that wheel around. It's it's crazy how how much it's actually moving that steering wheel but the point is uh, now we're, we're testing autopilot cars with autopilot and why not I think it's even more important that the autopilot can do this uh, I don't know if that's fair though I think that's slow I think that autopilot you know that the brain in the autopilot slowing that thing down I don't know if they can override that or not so it's kind of a cheat but it is what it is Anyway, I just wanted to show you that uh, we're testing autopilot cars now, too. And one more time, real quick. There you go. And it was really moving that wheel fast. It doesn't look like it's going that fast, though, really. Even through the driver's window, it doesn't look like it's going that fast. I bet that autopilot is slowing it down based on the course it's on. 
Anyway. So, let's, here's the thing. I'm going to start over here first. All right. Now, a lot of people said, well, there ain't no mooses. This is a bullshit test. It doesn't matter. It's unrealistic. Uh, you know, the, the way the, the test is set up is you take your foot, your feet off the gas and the brake, and you steer the car. And they say, the, the originators of the test said, uh, that's, that's how you would react if a moose came out in front of you. That's what you'd do. You would like, go, oh, take your foot off the accelerator. Uh, which I think is probably true. Anyway, uh, the point is that the giant fail that was in 97 with the uh, Mercedes uh, uh, utility, little utility van thing, that caused uh, the electronic stability control to basically be put in every passenger car as, as standard equipment. And part of that was putting in uh, ABS systems. So this is what, uh, I mean, uh, I'm talking in generalities here, but this basically is what put, uh, you know, the computer systems in and the auto ABS systems in the car, because that's how it works. It's a combination of sensors uh, talking to the computer, and the computer is applying the ABS system to different wheels to keep all four wheels on the ground and keep the car stable. So uh, the boost test is, is, you know, before this, uh, you know, electronic stability control was an expensive option, and uh, it wasn't on every vehicle. Uh, you know, these days, as opposed to the past, you know, the moose test is really a test of the vehicle's uh, uh, stability control. And I think this is especially true with a robot driver. Um, if, you, if you look at my previous videos on the moose test, you'll see the... Uh, Stability control, it makes all the difference. They're showing these little, I think it was an Italian, like a small delivery van, goes through, almost tips over. And then uh, the next run, they turn the electronic stability control on, and it goes through and it passes with, with uh, flying colors. So, um, you know, this is the result of the moose test. And um, I think... Um, we're, we're going to have self-driving, and we're going to have autonomy, and we're going to have level 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it is, level 20. They're all the different parameters they have for the self-autonomous vehicles. I think it's, I think it's, it's even more important that uh, these autonomous driving programs could pass this moose test. Because I don't want to be in a car, you know, that has autonomous driving if it can't do this. I think, uh, I know in my own driving in a major metro area, you come across this kind of stuff. It is not an irregular thing. Um, just the other day, I was driving down a road, and the guy, there was a girl, oh, I shouldn't say this, there was a person texting, drove through a stop sign right in front of me, and I had to veer off to the left and veer back into the lane in order not to get hit. And, uh, you know, it was very similar to this. Actually, I drove behind her. Uh, but uh, the point is, it, it wasn't far off from a moose test, and I, and I did throw on the brakes. And uh, anyway, the point is, I think the, uh, the moose test uh, made a big contribution to auto safety. And I think with autonomous vehicles, I think they need to take a look at, uh, you know, having, having them all pass the moose test. And can they pass it the same way, uh, you know, at the 37 miles an hour, or are the autonomous systems slowing it down? I don't know. Is that fair? I don't know. Anyway, it's something to think about. I never even knew what a moose test was before I did all this. Uh, now I'm, you know, I'm a moose test guy. Anyway, a lot of people said, well, there aren't no mooses. It doesn't matter if there's a moose. Okay, you, you, you know, but that's not the point. It's a collision avoidance test. Okay. Anyway, uh, so let's just go over some of the uh, things about electronic stability control. Uh, these are some rough statistics I pulled up. It prevents 200,000 to 300,000 crashes a year. And in this group of 200 to 300, it prevents 5,000 to 9,000 fatal crashes a year. Saves 
9,000 lives. And in this group, it eliminates 150,000 to 200,000 injuries a year. And, that, you know, whether that's a broken ankle or skull fracture or whatever. You know, these are, these are I think, you know, with human life, these are big numbers. And uh, obviously, the stability control saves millions of dollars in insurance costs, repair costs, you know, lost time, wages, whatever else is involved. So... Um, I think, uh, you know, the moose, I think the moose test ultimately is an important test. And I think uh, with autonomous vehicles, it's probably even more important than it's ever been. And I think they need to work out some parameters. Maybe they need a 88888-3 for autonomous vehicles. Because I'll tell you, I want my time. Uh, now, now uh, you know, the, in, the, in the last video I did on this, the Model S, the Tesla Model S, it just went right through. No problem. But can it do it autonomously? This is the question. Is the AI trained to do it autonomously? And is the car physically capable of doing it at that speed and so forth? It's interesting. You know, it could be a flaw. Uh, but anyway, that's my take on it. There's a lot of comments on this, on the Moose test. And uh, this is my two cents. Uh, not an engineer, that's for sure, but uh, that's how I feel about it. Okay, I got this music playing in the background. This is Anthony's Torque Roadster. This is what he came up with after he did the Aptera. Thanks for watching, guys.